Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to the very first video of 2020. I'm going to kick off and just wish you all a very, very happy new year and I hope you all had an amazing Christmas as well. I also want to say a massive thank you to everybody uh, or anybody who watched any of my videos in December because December absolutely broke records. We reached over a million views over December, which was absolutely astonishing. However, today's video slash stream, whatever you want to call it, is completely different. We're going to forget everything that happened last year because we've got some crazy exciting stuff to talk about today. Very, very, very exciting stuff indeed. So this morning at 9 o'clock, barely a few hours ago, Hornby announced their 2020 range. And what a range it is. I have spent the last goodness knows how many hours trying to get to grips with it, getting everything processed, getting everything noted down so that I can present it to you here. So hopefully you enjoy it. I've not had a great long time to look at it. I've not had a great long time to actually sit and think about the various products. All of that there will be time for though. Today we're just going to be talking about the various different new models that Hornby are going to be bringing out over 2020. So keep yourselves going in the chat. We will be taking breaks to find out what you guys think about all of the new models. So uh, do keep in there in the chat and we'll get to you eventually. This year, of course, is the centenary year of Hornby. It's 100 years of Hornby, or the Hornby name, and there are some very, very special models going to be in the range this year in order to celebrate that. But we'll get to all of that in just a second. Right, shall we get started then? Well, the first model is one that I'm extremely looking forward to, even though that doesn't make any sense. Uh, this is one that I did predict, and I'm glad that I was right. It is the Stevenson's Rocket. Now, this is quite interesting because on Hornby's website it does not say that this is a new tool, so I can't tell you for sure that it is a new tool. But if you look closely at that picture, I don't know how close you can get to the, sc uh, to the screen, it certainly does not look like the old Triang version. In fact, if I show you this, uh, I've got my original Triang version here. As you can see, only one coach. Uh, these days, if you want to get one of these rockets, you've got to buy the coaches separately and at great expense. And in fact, this set of three pieces here, Loco, Tender and Coach, cost me over £100. And so if you take a close look at that, there you go, can you see it? This is a 1963 model, I believe. And then if you take a look at what Hornby are presenting here, it does look an awful lot different. And in fact, the fidelity in the Loco and the uh, Coaches and everything really there looks to be completely worlds apart from the original Triang Stevenson's rocket. So very exciting. I do think it is going to be all new tool, which is very exciting indeed. So a bit of info about those then. Uh, they are £179.99. That is, of course, the RRP. And I do have links down in the description. It's an affiliate link, so if you want to see it on Hattons, for example, or support the channel, you can use that link. Also, Hornby.com is the place to go if you want to see the entire range. But Hornby's price for Stevenson's Rocket is £179.99. And if you want to look it up at the retailer of your choice, the product number you need is R381. But yeah, how many years has it been since there has been a Stevenson's rocket in Hornby's range? Absolutely, um, incredibly long time, isn't it? Um, yeah, before I was born, that's for sure. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping there's going to be some serious upgrades to Stevenson's rocket. Um, I'm expecting, a, at the very least, pickups in the tender as well as the loco possibly even in some of the coaches as well. And uh, yeah, I've always been looking for more coaches for this and um, I'm finally gonna be able to do that, aren't I? So yeah, that is very exciting indeed. A brand new Stevenson's rocket. And we're gonna talk about all of the new locos, first of all, by the way, and then we'll get on to rolling stock and then some of the accessories. So next up then is an LNER class W1 Hush Hush. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Here it comes now. What an unusual locomotive that is. Now, you might look at that, and at the first glance you might think, well, that is just a, a P2, isn't it? Well, you're sort of right. I mean, it is, it's a Gresley design, and as was the P2, but as you can see, it's not quite the same. It's a 262, uh, uh, sorry, a 464, honestly, what is he like? And this was an experimental locomotive. Uh, it is singular, not, pl not plural, <laughs> if I can even say it properly. It was experimental and it was unique. Only one ever built, as I say, towards the end of the 1920s. It had a high pressure boiler 
and unfortunately it was eventually rebuilt and after it was rebuilt it just resembled more of an A4. I think it might have even become classified as an A4, I'm not too sure about that. But uh, yeah, Hornby are doing it in the unrebuilt form and the rebuilt form, so whichever you prefer is obviously absolutely fine. Uh, I think this image here is the rebuilt, sorry, the unrebuilt version, that's right. And if you want to look that one up, it is R3841. Um, I think that is the version that you can see on screen there, although of course that is a photo. And then I think they are doing the rebuilt version as well for the same price. Uh, nope, that's not it. I don't have a picture of the rebuilt version. Um, but yeah, they are the same. Uh, they are the same, I believe, the same price at the very least. Okay, I gave away the next one very slightly, but uh, the next one is this. It is a BR Standard Class 2 MT. Now, you might look at that and think, man, we've just seen one of those in the uh, worst model trains of 2019. Well, you're almost right, that one was a Backman IVAC Class 2 MT, and in fact, even Hornby have produced one of those in the past. I believe this is an IVAC version as well. Now, in truth, there's not a great deal of difference between the IVAC Class 2 MT and the BR Standard Class 2 MT. I think they're basically largely the same design. Uh, obviously, the BR Standard Class 2 was updated and changed very slightly, but the design is very much the same. So, I'm not 100% sure that a BR Standard Class 2 has actually been produced in double O gauge. I might be completely wrong, as I said at the start, I've not had a chance to look these things up properly yet, but I don't think that's been done before, at least not for a very long time. I'm pretty sure this one's an IVAT anyway, although I could be wrong. Um, I'm sure someone will let me know if that's the case. But either way, yep, yeah, a brand new standard class 2 in double O gauge from Hornby, so that's very exciting news. Bit of int uh, information on that for you then, so this is £179.99, so quite a lot I would say for a relatively small tender engine really. However, don't forget that that is the RRP. If you want to get it from one of the retailers, it's going to be a little bit cheaper. And the product number, if you want to look it up, is R3839, although there's a couple of different versions, I think. So again, just check out Hornby's website if you want to have a look at the different versions available. Okay, so that's the BR Standard Class 2. The next loco is this one. This is also, these are all new tools, by the way. These are not re-releases, although there are some to talk about later on. So the next one is the Thompson Class A2 slash 2 and also the A2 slash 3. Uh, so if you want to look, uh, well, first of all, we'll talk about the A2 slash 2 then, shall we? So that one is R3831, I believe, although there are a couple of different variations, so check those out. And they are going to cost £189.99, so once again, definitely right up there. But they're quite interesting machines. So the A2 slash 2 were actually rebuilt from P2 locomotives, as I've already mentioned. And if you don't know what the P2 looks like, I've got one just here. So yeah, very interesting 282 locomotive. Hornby did these a little while ago. And as you know, Thompson, uh, the rotter that he was I suppose if you're keeping this uh, family friendly rebuilt a lot of Gresley designs into his own sort of strange and oddly awkward designs which often didn't work very well but we won't get into that and yet yeah, the P2 was no exception and he rebuilt all of the P2s into his A2s I think they were I think that's basically the story. And in fact, Hornby are producing Cock of the North. So that's this one, by the way. So for the first time ever in double O gauge, you're actually going to be able to own P2 Cock of the North as it was originally built and then own it as uh, an A2, as you can see there, which is very, very exciting. So the A2 slash 3, and I do have a picture of this one, uh, that one was slightly different. Uh, these were not rebuilt from previous Gresley designs, as many of Thompson's locos were. These were, in fact, all new builds, and 15 of them were constructed in 1946. And if you want to know the product number of that, I believe it is R3833, and there's another one as well if you want to look those up. So yes, quite, we're doing quite well for Pacifics, aren't we? So that's really cool. Uh, Pre-grouping so far, thumbs up. Um, sort of BR, l &E r Pacifics, yes, thumbs up. So really, really cool so far. Okay, let's talk about something else besides Rocket, I suppose, that has been really, really heavily requested. So that is indeed this, the l &E r Class 91. Now, this is outside of my area of expertise, if in fact you can argue that I've got such a thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know an awful lot about these. 
which is usually true, of course. Uh, however, as I say, yeah, these have been very, very heavily requested of Hornby, as I as I understand it. Uh, the one on the screen at the moment is the latest era 11 LNER livery version, as you can see there. But they're also doing uh, this one here in the Intercity Swallow livery, which is in the 1980s condition. Electric locomotives, of course, these are going to be sold for £169.99. And if you want to look the product numbers up, they are R3891. And the classic one that you can see there in the Swallow livery is R3891. So that's what you need to look up if you want to know more about those. Okay, so the next one is even more heavily requested. People have been banging on about, well, not banging on because that sounds a bit negative, but people have been sort of, um, I don't know, hoping, wishing, keeping their fingers crossed for absolutely years to get their hands of one on one of these. And at long last, Hornby have delivered, well, they haven't delivered, but they have promised to deliver this. It is the BR APT, of course. Now, these are quite interesting. They're, they're also known as the Class 370, although most people just know them as the APTs. It's all a little bit confusing, though, because, um, I mean, you can sort of buy these separately, but then you can buy them as a pack as well. So let me just try and explain this as best I can. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But this is, this is as I understand it. So the non-driven motor is available separately for £109.99. I didn't actually find the driven motor, so maybe I've misunderstood that. Uh, but then there are coach packs, and I counted seven coach packs, although I can't remember whether I gave up counting or whether I counted them all. But there are seven coach packs, each with two coaches in each, available for £89.99. And if you want to look those up, they are R4012, R4013, etc., etc., uh, through, through the entire range. But you can also buy this as a set, uh, uh, let me try and show you a bit of that. Oh no, they're the coach packs. There we go, yeah. But the set is available for £394.99, which I believe is a three-car set. So how many cars did these things run with in real life? As I say, these are outside of my area of expertise. I use the word expertise extremely lightly there. Um, but yeah, so that is R3873 if you want the entire set. I suppose that makes things easier, but I don't know if you want to customise or do things your own way or have more vehicles, whatever you like, then it is all available separately, which is quite good it's not just the one option you haven't just got to buy that set and live with it at least there's a bit of customizability there so that's really really good now the next thing is going to intrigue and confuse i imagine because uh, it certainly did uh, with me so i was perusing let's say the hornby website looking at their 2020 range and i came across this now, you might be thinking, why is there a picture here of a 100-year-old <laughs> Hornby locomotive? Um, well, this is the start, well, it's the first of many products that Hornby are going to be releasing this year for their centenary celebration, their 100 years. And just look at that. Can you believe that we're in 2020 and Hornby are releasing something like this? So, as I say, I was, I was perusing the Hornby website. This flashed onto the screen. Um, it's listed for £524.99. It's not clear whether this is O-Gage or double O. At the time when I looked at Hornby's website, it did not have any information whatsoever. It was just a photo, a title, <laughs> and a price. Apparently, though, this is a brand new tool of a 1920 Hornby Midland Railway number one locomotive. I'm guessing it's going to be O gauge because double O gauge locos, O40s don't tend to cost £500, or at least not in my time, hopefully. Uh, so, yeah, how interesting that is. Um, there's quite a few different versions. There's a, a Great Northern version, G on the GNR, no, GN. I think, so presumably Great Northern. There's an LNWR version and a Caledonian version in the blue. So yeah, very interesting, very unusual. Uh, Hornby are certainly doing a lot of different versions of those. So yeah, I mean, let me know down in the comments, what do you think about that? Do you think there's a market for something like that? I think it's an amazing thing to do. Um, but it's just completely unexpected really, isn't it? I mean, Hornby produced double O gauge stuff, right? Um, and here we've got this incredible it's it's almost like right it's it's not as though hornby are taking a real locomotive here and producing a model of it it's like they're taking a model locomotive and sort of creating a new version of that model it's like a model of a model absolutely bizarre and completely original and i think it's going to do really really well and of course it's not the only uh, product of that ilk either so there's also this 
So this is the Sir Nigel Gresley train set. As you can see, it is in the Hornby Dublo branding, uh, or Dublo, I think you should call it. Uh, and this is how the train sets used to look in 1938, circa 1938. And this is product number R1252M, if you want to look it up. And the RRP for this is £249.99. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh my giddy aunt, what is going on there? Well, I think unlike the sort of O-gauge loco we've just seen, uh, this is not a model of the original Hornby Dublo locomotive, as far as I can tell. Dublo, I need to stop saying Dublo. As far as I can glean, it is the modern Hornby A4 inside that train set, and also the modern teaks, uh, not the teaks that I've got, the really nice sort of proper teak finished versions. Uh, so as far as I can tell, it is just a modern set in an old-fashioned box, which is quite an interesting and slightly conniving way, I suppose, isn't it, of uh, shifting <laughs> models built this year and, you know, people who have already got a, a, a Sir Nigel Gresley A4 or a Mallard or whatever, and the coaches to go with it, it gives them a reason to buy another, doesn't it? Uh, especially those who were around back in the 1930s. I can't imagine there's very many, but I'm sure there are one or two. Ooh, just offended half of the audience there. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there are lots of those who will have fond memories of the Hornby Dublo. I uh, got it right that time, days, and want to pick up something like that. And it does not end there, believe it or not. So take a look at this one. This is my particular favourite. So we have a recreation, although we use that term extremely lightly because, of course, it's not really a recreation. But it's a representation of the original Triang Rovex, as we can call it, I suppose we call it Rovex, um, train set. I think the original one was a Marks and Spencer's one, but the point is it had the Princess Royal class. Now, the original Princess Royal class is a very significant locomotive. It was a real milestone. In fact, this is a slightly later one, but the original one used this particular body tooling. It was the first model really made available ex inexpensively. It was the first model done in plastic, and it was the first model that people, you know, just average Joes, not the posh toffs who could afford the Hornby, Hornby Dublo stuff, but the average Joe, even children, could afford to buy these. And this really was the first loco that that was ever made possible for. An incredible milestone, and it really is what Hornby, it's, it really is what made Hornby what they are today, really. Not the Hornby Dublo engines, it was this, and this particular loco, I mean, not this exact one, but this model, this model did it all. Every single Hornby loco that we see today is derived from this princess, and I don't think that's too much of an exaggeration. However, this set is not cheap. Uh, I think the price is about 250 quid. Where is it? Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, this is £249.99, and it's R1251M if you want to look it up. Once again, there is very little information on Hornby's website, but I think it's reasonably safe to presume that we are not going to be getting a sort of rehashed version of the 19... What year was this? 1951, I think it was. It was pretty early. Uh, I've not got it down there. It's early 1950s anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be looking like this. Oh, that was Bullman. Thank you, Bullman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, whoever that was. Yeah, I'm fairly certain this is going to include the modern princess and presumably a couple of blood and custard coaches in order to match that original train set. I think that's the only way to uh, sort of justify that price. And ov obviously we don't have the new princesses yet. They haven't been released, or at least not as far as I know. I've been up here just sort of struggling through all this lot today. So unless they've been released in the last four hours, we haven't got the new princesses yet. But I'm assuming that the Rovex set, as seen right there, is going to contain the new princess. So once again, I mean, it's just a clever bit of marketing. And I love it, by the way. I don't know if I'll get it. I probably will. Uh, as far as I can tell, the contents of the set aren't going to have an awful lot to do with trying Rovex, anything like that although they may well do, for all I know. But uh, yeah, either way, it's just, um, I can just, I mean, I wasn't around, obviously, in the 1950s, but can you just imagine the people that were seeing maybe their first ever train set coming back into the Hornby range? It's just, it's, it's kind of, I feel like a bit of a noob saying it, or whatever, can't say the word I wanted to, but it's kind of magical, isn't it? There's something really special about that. Right, let's get, over, let's get away from the uh, gooeyness. Right, so the next one, ah, oh, you're going to enjoy this one. Are you ready for it? Just take a look at that. So this is once again a centenary celebratory item. It is, of course, Stevenson's Rocket, but this time with the Triang branding, <laughs> which is just crazy, isn't it? Who ever expected to see something <laughs> like that? And we have a crafty laugh in the background. Thank you very much to whoever that was. I will get back to you. 
Anyway, so this is in the packaging circa 1963, I believe. This is the first time Rocket was announced, or produced rather, uh, or at least made to look it. Now, once again, I'm fairly sure that Hornby don't have the toolings for this original Rocket anymore. Uh, so I can say with some certainty that you're not going to be paying $189.99 for this incredibly dated model. I fully expect that this will be the retooled version, if indeed Hornby are retooling it, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that they are anyway. <laughs> Hopefully that won't come back to bite me. But yeah, just the very thought of something, a box with Triang branding on it is coming back into the range this year is just shockingly impressive, isn't it? And I know for one, me for one, is going to be, uh, I'm going to be sorry because it's going to cost me an awful lot of money and I think there are quite a few people out there as well who feel the same way. But once again, that is still not all because we've got some more centenary models to look at. So the next one is this. Now, if the Princess was a revolutionary milestone of a locomotive, the original 9F Evening Star from Hornby 1971 was that times about, I don't know, 100. So yes, for those of you who don't know, this amazing model was first released in 1971. And as far as I'm aware, even the latest 9Fs that Hornby have produced, or this one was a few years ago, but even these were made using the same moulds, the same tools. Um, as far as I know, I mean, the mechanism's long gone. Uh, it's, they're now loco-driven, of course, and not tender-driven anymore. But they were so good for their time. I mean, just look at the size of the wheel set. This was revolutionary. Nobody had seen a model like this when it first came out in uh, 1971. Even the motor, I mean, we came to hate the ring-filled motors in the end, but it was the first loco to use the ring-filled motor mounted into the tender. That was the only way to make the thing possible at the time. And uh, even though, you know, I bad-mouthed the ring-filled motor, that thing was around for years. They were still producing it in the 2000s. I mean, that is just astonishing, isn't it, for a sort of like a, a toy model product. Absolutely amazing. So, yes, I mean, the others, you know, the Rocket, the Princess, they're all new tools. But it looks as though this one, this 1971 throwback, is actually going to be the original model. In fact, you can even see it. You see the pipework just underneath the cab there? It looks as though the livery has even been enhanced very slightly for this version. Uh, and that's true for the original 1971 version. Uh, this here is the railroad version. And as you can see, are we looking at the right side? Yeah, as you can see, a lot of the painted details haven't been picked out, but they had on that 1971 version, and obviously Hornby have done their research, because looking at the photo there, yes, that one too has some of that uh, picked out detail on it, which is absolutely amazing. So there we are, that's a bit of a throwback to 1971, so any of, the, uh, any of you guys that were children back in those days, you'll probably remember that because it was a really, really big thing back in the day. So once again, an absolutely top-notch choice from Hornby to pick that one. Absolutely love that. Okay, so now we're getting sort of more into familiar territory for most people. Still not for me. This is still long before I was born, embarrassingly. Uh, but it's one that I'm certainly more than familiar with. And it is, of course, Smokey Joe in that photo looking completely unlike we've seen him before. But as many of you know, Smokey Joe has been a real staple of the Hornby range for many, many years indeed. Uh, this was 1983, this was first introduced. And once again, Hornby are going to be bringing this back. Now, that's the funny thing, right? I mean, Hornby have brought this back many times. I bought this a couple of years ago. However, just knowing that it's a centenary version, as you can see, it looks as though it's going to be glossy. It looks as though the livery has been enhanced. It's Smokey Joe like we've never seen it before. So even though it's a basic railroad 040, even though it, uh, you know, it's not going to be winning any awards or anything, people are going to want to buy it. And I can speak from experience because just see, I mean, just look at that. That is Smokey Joe, unlike he's ever been seen before. It just makes you hungry for it. So I don't know whether to curse Hornby or to praise them because, uh, like I said earlier, they're going to cost me. I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. But they're going to be costing some people an awful lot of money, whether that's just me, I don't know. But yeah, amazing to see that. Smokey Joe coming back in a completely new guise. Okay, so the next one, now we are getting into my territory now, at least I was born when this one was introduced. Once again, centenary celebrations, we're jumping forward to the year 2000 now, and Hornby are 2020 going to be releasing a new version of this. Now, yes, it's got the gold plating on it, I know, and uh, that does put the price up, of course. Uh, by the way, Smokey Joe, £39.99, R822. This one is the Merchant Navy class, um, 2000, that's the year it's commemorating. It's clan line, it's R3824, and of course, as a result of that gold plating. Sit down, folks, hold on to something solid, uh, £224.99, but as I say, yeah, that's pretty much what you expect. 
So that's quite interesting, isn't it? I mean, here we've got the model, if you want to see it. This is one of the original 2001 versions. I think since then they haven't changed very much. In fact, Hornby still have these in the range today. I think they were still producing them up until last year or something like that, which probably explains why they're going to have that gold plating on them, because obviously someone who bought one just last year has now got a reason to buy another at an incredibly larger price, haven't they? So yeah, probably that's a little bit clever, but I can speak from experience and say these were fantastic models. In fact, all of the 2001 models, just like the Princess, just like the original 9F, they set new standards, really. The level of detail on these Locos was just absolutely astonishing, and also the performance was as well. We've got these sort of sprung wheels, five pole motors for the first time, full tender pickups. For 2001, that was pretty incredible. So that is coming back this year. Clan line, I think, was probably the first of them. Uh, yes, I think it's generally accepted. I think that the Merchant Navies were the first, but they also did Princesses, Coronations. Um, I think they also did, yeah, they did West Country classes around that, that sort of era. So that's the one that's coming back. And then finally, up to the present day, up to 2016, I think that's the latest one. Again, I could have missed some, so if I have, do let me know. But the next one that is coming is that. Now, feast your eyes on that thing, folks. What on earth? So, I mean, it's beautiful. Don't, uh, don't take what on earth to mean a criticism in any way. Uh, so this is, of course, the Centenary W4 Peckett. I don't believe they actually released a version like that in 2016, so they must just be talking about the model itself, which is a little bit uh, confusing. But if you're sort of struggling to recognize it, really, in that livery, you can see it here. This is the uh, sort of leaf green version. So just imagine this model, amazing and beautiful as it is, top quality model, really. Imagine that in this, I don't even know, is it silver? Is it gray? Is it a mixture of the two? I'm not sure. 614, it says on the side. It looks gorgeous. Uh, it's no more expensive, really. I think it's about the same price. Is it? I can't remember what the price was, never mind. Uh, if you want to look it up, incidentally, it's R3825, and yes, circa 2016. And I think that is the last of the centenary objects, the objects, products. Uh, there may have been more, as I say, I really was skimming through them this morning because I've had an awful lot to do to get prepared. But I think that is all of the main ones. I know there was another Hornby Dublo one, so if you want to look into that, I can't remember what that one was. Was there a princess? That can't have been a princess. Might have been a castle. Who knows? I'm not too sure. Anyway, let's move on to the next one then. You're going to be amazed at this one if you haven't seen it already. Are you ready for it? Oh, my word. Right. So, <laughs> when, I, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, here we go. Hornby Jr. is back, isn't it? Because I saw those colours and I thought, oh, right. Okay, Hornby Jr. is back. That's a thumbs down. Different looking loco. That looks like a Eurostar. Thumbs up. Well, no, apparently this is not a Hornby Junior train set. It's just got sort of a flower power packaging because, of course, this is designed to commemorate the Beatles or rather the Yellow Submarine. Uh, so this is called the Eurostar Yellow Submarine train set. It's R1253M and it's going to be coming in RRP at £149.99. And this one is also available in a train pack as well, I think. Now, the image on Hornby's site for the train pack was very confusing. I don't really know what it contains. I think it's just the train without any of the track and any of the controllers and such, but I think we'll have to get Hornby to confirm that at some point. Either way, though, that's pretty good if that's true, because obviously if you don't need the track and you don't need the controllers, you're not spending any money on that. And indeed, the prices are quite a bit different. So as I say, the train set itself is £149.99. And if you want to buy the train pack on its own, which I think, I can't guarantee, but I think is the same thing just without any of the, the extra guff, is £109.99 and it's R3829. So the interesting thing about it is this actually was real. Uh, I was too young to remember it, but this is not just a train that Hornby have dreamt up. It really did exist apparently back in 1999. I think it was just unveiled out of the blue, not 100% sure what for, presumably to honour the remaining Beatles at the time with the yellow submarine, I suppose. Um, but either way, yes, it was real and the, the Eurostar train, the particular consist in question, carried the livery for three months, which is very interesting. So there we are. I'll let you feast your eyes on that one more time. Uh, it looks like a, is that a four car set, I think. It's got the re-railer, it's got the track, a set of points as well. So it's a good train set, actually. Not bad for 150 quid. Not bad. I've been thinking about getting a Eurostar, but I don't know if I want one with the Beatles all over it. Although, of course, I love the Beatles, and I, love, I know a lot of other people do as well. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so that is the bulk of the new stuff covered, I think. 
but there's also lots to talk about because there are some new locos coming back into the range. Uh, one in particular was this, the standard 9F. Let me show you this. Now, it is a standard 9F, but that's not really what I mean by the use of the word standard. I mean standard here in the sense that it doesn't have the Franco Crosti boiler, or the, as you can see, we don't have this strange Franco Crosti chimney. For the first time in quite a few years, Hornby have brought back the 9F in its original form in the BR Black. I think it was BR, well, it's got to be BR Black, isn't it? Uh, which is a good thing. Now, this particular version of mine has been in the wars a little bit, and it was not my fault. Uh, the loco, all the motor mounting brackets have crumbled away due to Mazak rot, and in fact, the tender, if I turn it upside down, crumbled away entirely and so I've had to basically reconstruct it. You can see I've got some weights in there to give it some weight and I've literally just glued the bearings into the body of the tender so that it still works. Um, so yeah, I mean, hope, I mean, Hornby's models don't really have Mazak rot problems anymore, although I probably shouldn't say that, let's touch some wood quickly. Uh, so a new version of this would be, I think, much appreciated for those who have uh, yeah, lost theirs to Mazak rot. However, I've already bought new motor mountings for mine, so I won't need to buy a new one. But uh, yeah, it's very tempting, isn't it? And it's nice to see the non crusty version uh, back in the range again. I seem to think that they'd retooled it and sort of damaged or changed the old tooling so that the, the old original 9F wasn't producible anymore. That's what I thought. Um, but no, we've got the Evening Star back and this back this year. So obviously that isn't true. And that's good news because I, I know that uh, even though the Franco Crosti versions are, are good and I, I think they're excellent models, it's nice to get the original 9F, isn't it? So let me just show you a little shot of that. There it is. Uh, yep, yeah, BR Black. What is that number? 92219. And what's the one I've got? Uh, mine's 92221. So, yeah, slightly different version, but of course, uh, the same model by all means. Mm. Now, this next one you're going to absolutely love. Are you ready for this? Man, this one's gorgeous. Okay, here we go. Here it comes. Take it away. Just, shall we have, I was going to say, we'll have a, a minute to sit and look at that, but I think uh, that's probably going a bit too far, isn't it? So, coming back to the range is the T9 in LSWR Green. Now, Hornby did produce this livery a little while ago, but I think it was a special edition. I've certainly never seen one for sale. They're quite rare, aren't they? Uh, I've got a couple of them already, and I suppose that makes what I'm about to say even more embarrassing, because even though I've got a couple of them, and even though they're lovely, I think that LSWR, is it called Holly Green? It just takes, it just knocks the socks off them, doesn't it? I mean, this is gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but that LSWR livery is amazing. And uh, Hornby know that because the RRP is £169.99. And these models are not brand new, they've been around for a little while. However, they are pretty top notch models. They've got the die cast uh, bodies, of course. They do have traction tyres, so please. Hornby, if you're watching, we don't mind if they'll be a little bit weaker. We don't mind if they can't manage 10 coaches, but do away with the traction tyres because I hate having to replace them. If it comes to light that these are not going to have traction tyres in them, I might even pre-order the LSWR green ones, uh, or one of them rather. Don't know why I used a plural there. Um, but yeah, they are good models, I would say. They could be better quite easily, so the model weighs a lot. Like I say, it's got a die-cast body. The traction tyre is not all that necessary. But besides that, though, yeah, they're decent models. So the new version that is going to be released, which looks like that, in case you forgot, is R3863, I think, if I can read that properly. And like I say, yes, £169.99. So you are paying quite a premium for that. But as I say, they are, they're decent models, and presumably the LSWR livery is expensive to perfect. I don't know why it would be that expensive, but as I say, the retailers sell them a little bit cheaper anyway. Okay, so obviously we also have some princesses coming this year, or so we hope, and Hornby have announced some new variations to the princess. One that stood out to me was this one in the BR Green, and this is Queen Maud, I believe it is, as you can see there. Now, once again, the, the last princess I bought in BR Green was an old trying one. In fact, it's back it's over there someplace. Uh, so I've not had one modern, obviously, for a long time. The 2000 version I don't think ever came out in BR Green. I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever seen one. So yeah, a BR Green princess, absolutely top notch. Uh, did I get some info on that? No, I did not. There's also going to be some new Ruston variations. If you don't know what the Rustons are, I've got mine here. In fact, I'm going to be reviewing this over the next few days, hopefully. 
There you go, that's what they look like. Uh, this one is uh, Queen Anne. This one came out just before Christmas. But there are going to be some new versions released, uh, including this one. Now, take a look at that. Talk about fetching. So that one is the Express Dairy version, I think it is. Uh, R3943 is that one. And then we also have uh, an in well, equally, if not more, interesting livery there, which is the Grant Rail LTD Yellow, which is R3853. And there's even more different versions. So if you want to check those out on Hornby's website, you can do. I think the price has pretty much stayed the same. They're still way less than £100, as far as I know, or at least they will be from the retailers. There's some more Terriers coming to, well, not coming to stock, but going to come into stock at some point if all goes well. Uh, here's one that looks great. I'm not sure whether Hornby have released one of these or not. I've sort of stopped following them <laughs> since I got mine. But that's the LSWR version, which of course would go very nicely with the T9. Ah, what a thought that is. Very fetching, yes, is that. Uh, £94.99 is that one. That is R3846. But that is not the most interesting of the new Terriers announced. And I have to say, due to my ignorance, which is incontrovertible, I've never actually seen this next one before. But here it comes now. It is this. Now, it's BR Green, but not really BR Green that we've seen before. I think, um, if I noted it down correctly, this is known as the Transnational BR Green. Uh, either way, if you want to look it up, it's R3848. But yeah, that just, uh, yeah, I had to double take, really. I thought, blimey. I've never seen anything like that before. So nice to see, I don't know if it's obscure, I mean, just because I've never seen it before doesn't make it obscure. But uh, yeah, let me know, have you seen, have you heard of such a thing before? Um, makes me sound a bit stupid, doesn't it? But yeah, it's nice to, it's nice to be introduced to new things. There are also some new packets. Uh, we've already talked about the uh, the W4 packet uh, and the Centenary version, but there's also going to be some new B2s as well, as of course uh, there had to be really. So this is an NCB green. I don't know if we've done this one already, have they? It might have been the uh, the W4 uh, that they did, but this is the B2. Did I say BW4 then? That's the B2. The 060 version is the B2. The W4 is that one, of course. That is the, uh, the 040 version, and that one is the Crochet Brothers, I believe. So yeah, that's those. Now, another model that is returning to the range that I haven't seen for a little while is the Britannia class. Let me get a shot of that for you. There we go. Now, once again, these have been a staple of the Hornby range for many, many years. In fact, the one I've got is very old indeed, probably 1960s, this one. Uh, I've never had the modern retooled version. Uh, I think they retooled it about 20 years ago and a tender-driven version was produced. Whether or not the newly announced Hornby Britannias are the same as that, I'm not too sure. Like I say, I never had the uh, the tender-driven version, so I've never had cause to look them up, really. Uh, they are very expensive, that's worth saying. This one is Oliver Cromwell, number R3865, and it's going to be sold for £199.99, which does sound like an awful lot of money uh, if it wasn't newly tooled. It didn't say new tooling on Hornby's site, so maybe it is a bit of an old one. I don't know, if there were a bit less, if there were like 130 from the retailers, I might consider it, because I'd love to get a new Britannia, and I'm running out of models to review. But yeah, I don't know, let, let me let, let me know what you think, folks, in the chat. Um, seems a lot of money, it looks like a great loco, and I'm sure it will be, but yeah, £199.99 does sound like quite a lot. But such is life, I mean, none of these are cheap, are they? But then again, they're not going to be poor value for money either, um, if uh, Hornby are up to their usual standards. Okay, so let's talk about the next one then. Now, we talked about the Lord Nelson class quite a lot last year. Three versions, I think, were produced last year. Um, goodness knows which they were, but I think there were three. But there's now going to be a fourth, or at least a fourth. And it looks like this. Man. Look at that, isn't that temptation itself? So I think that's the Malachite Green, is that right? I don't think it's Mournsel Green, or oh, I could call it Malachite again, if you like. I've said that quite a lot last year, I seem to remember. Uh, and these are reasonably priced. I mean, these were tooled up about, they were first released about a year ago, weren't they? More or less to the month. Uh, this one is R3865, and the price for this is gonna be £169.99, that's the RRP. Now, when the Lord Nelsons were first announced, I'm sure they were more than that, weren't they? Have I got that wrong? That sounds bizarre. I have to double check that, but that doesn't seem expensive. I mean, it is expensive, but by the time you get 10% off at the retailers or whatnot, yeah, that's quite good. And of course, the, the that Malachite green is gorgeous, isn't it? It's one of the nicest liveries. It almost makes me uh, regret my olive green version, but I don't know, such is life. It looks fantastic, very, very tempting. And anyway, 
Last thing before we get on to rolling stock and before I take a look at the chat, there's a train set that I thought looked deeply interesting. So let me show it to you. Now, yeah, it looks like a run-of-the-mill Hornby train set. It's called the Great Western Freight Train Set. As you can see by the photo there, it includes a pannier tank as well as a reasonable sized train, including a passenger coach, by the way, which seems like a, a bizarre thing to include in a train set called the Great Western Freight Train Set. Uh, no comment. Um, but either way, the interesting thing is, it seems to include a crane. Fascinating indeed. That is not, I don't believe, the railroad crane that I've reviewed, nor is it the sort of larger four-piece crane that Hornby produce. So which crane is that? I, it does ring a bell. I've seen one before. It's not the Hornby Double O crane, is it? Um, you can't really see it very well there, but uh, yeah, very, very interesting. And the train set is not expensive by any means. Um, it is R1254M, and the price is £119.99, and that is the RRP. So we're talking a little smidge over £100 there from the retailers. Shocking stuff, really, to say that it includes uh, a crane. So let's just have one more look. I'm going to get up and look closely. It looks like it's got a chain on it. Is it just the crane bit from the four-piece crane? I'm not sure. Really unusual, that. But yeah, it looks like we've got a towed brake van in there, possibly. You can just about see it there on the right-hand side. Uh, you've got what looks like the Great Western version of the four-wheeled coach, the crane, and then a Great Western open wagon. That's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. And um, oh, there's a set of points as well, isn't there? Yeah, I'm looking at this properly for the first time. Man, I'm going to get one of those pre-ordered, man. That is very, very good. Um, well, I'll be interested to see what that crane is. Right, let me grab my um, chatting iPad. Let's put the chat up. What do people think so far? How is it going? What are you excited about? Uh, what are you not excited about might be a quicker question to ask. Of all the things you've just seen, they were just the locos, by the way. We're going to get onto rolling stock and such and accessories. Oh, we've got some accessories to go at. Um, yeah, but what of what you've seen already? Pick one item. What are you most excited about? I guess I'll have to do the same. Now, it's got to be Stevenson's Rocket, without a doubt. Oops, pulled the chimney off. Got to buy a new one now. Um, yeah, it's got to be Stevenson's Rocket. Let's just make a quick repair there. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is an old friend, don't get me wrong. I've had to solder pickups into the tender and the coach, which is why I've got to hold these together um, so that it works properly. Uh, the thought of a brand new version that will just work properly, or presumably, fingers crossed, work properly straight out of the box, is uh, quite a thought indeed. But uh, let's see what people are saying. My poor bank account, says your boy James97. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Uh, yes, I saw the steampunk stuff as well, the Ugly Duck Man, but I did not see that on Hornby's website. Uh, so I don't know whether that's available or not. Same thing goes for the uh, new analog controllers, which I will talk about briefly, but I didn't see it on Hornby's website. Oh, is that stuff on the website? Um, it's been probably since about 11, since I last looked at the website, but I did not see it at the time, although I did look. And a lot of the new stuff doesn't appear to be in the Hornby search yet, or at least it didn't back at 11 o'clock. So, yeah, whether it's there or not, I'm not sure. Whether it's just been announced but not yet priced up or whatever, I'm not too sure. Nice mug, says Dab on Clickbait. I know, what a, what a superb mug this is. I bought it from Wally last year from the Hornby stand. Um, well, they, they haven't died, so obviously they didn't lace it with poison or anything. Um, oh, right, the LMS Ginty says he owns the older version of that crane from Triang. That is very interesting. I've never seen that crane before. How can that be? That's bizarre. Uh, the Great Western Freight Pack, really? Yeah, that is cool. You mean, you mean the train set, Blue Boy 3801? Yeah, it was a good value. I mean, once the price has come down, we're going to be getting that for 100 quid, aren't we? Very good stuff. Big up that new Lord Nelson, says Adam Kelly. Yes, very, very true. That Lord Nelson looks top-notch, doesn't it? If only it was available with the first lot, that would be, that would be an easier choice. You know, I really wasn't sure which one I was going to buy when I had the choice of those first three Lord Nelsons that Hornby brought out. If they'd have brought that one out sooner, it would have been easy, but never mind. Uh, I just saw something about, oh yeah, Jackamus Prime 50. We all live in a yellow submarine, yellow Eurostar, Eurostar submarine. Yellow Eurostar submarine. Oh, that's it's got an interesting ring to it. Uh, don't think uh, what's his name from the Beatles. How can Ringo Starr? I don't think uh, I don't think his old mind, bless him, would allow him to sing such a convoluted version of the tune. But never mind. I'm sure he could try. Uh, pocket money needs to save you. Yep, I agree, Finn. I'm gonna have to try and get some pocket money from somewhere. Uh, get a picture of it, Mark. So this is a mugshot. Very good. Very good. See what you did there. 
Right, let's take a look. Anybody else excited about anything in particular? I've not seen anything about the the 2MT. Anybody excited about the 2MT? I suppose I am. I mean, it's nice to it's nice to have a, a decent 2MT, isn't it? I won't say anything else, but yeah, that one I reviewed last year wasn't much good. Uh, although obviously it is a different class, very slightly. Uh, right, the chat on my pad has frozen. Yep. It certainly has. I think we've managed, I think you've managed to break the chat. Let me have a quick look on the screen. Uh, although I haven't got my glasses on, so I don't know why I'm bothering to try. Either way, we'll come back to it later on. Let me just refresh this and see if we can get to it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about rolling stock, and then we'll get on to accessories, because uh, I don't want to... Oh, it's, it's, it's going again now. Uh, what an angry Ollie Cromwell. Uh, what an angry Ollie Cromwell, but at that price. Angry? What was, why was he angry? Oh, he wasn't a particularly nice chap, but I wouldn't say he's angry. Uh, yeah, might pay up to 250. Uh, yeah, that's true. If you want it, I don't think it was DCC fitted or TTS fitted, so that's very true. Yeah, you might end up paying that for it. Um, oh, and thank you very much, Rin uh, Nishimura. You deserve some. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Interesting phrase there. I, I, I agree, I certainly do. Right, uh, Sam's chat froze. Yeah, he lasted. I did leave my iPad in the freezer. Yes, you're right, Mark. Oh, there we go. Adam Rushton is excited for the new 2MT. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, yeah, I am as well, actually. Uh, it's going to break me to buy one, but uh, very exciting either way. Um, Forty pound for Smoky Joe is awesome, says Dab on Clickbait. Um, if it was for a standard run-of-the-mill Smoky Joe like this, I would very much vehemently disagree but uh, yeah because it's in the gloss and it's looking so completely different to it has before i suppose i can i can agree that it's an awesome price but i haven't seen it yet mm. right thank you very much for contributing folks uh, if you haven't had chance to get your little message read out yet uh, keep them coming and after we've looked at some of the rolling stock, I will get to some of that. Now, there's not a huge amount of new rolling stock. There is quite a lot of stuff that's returning to the range. I'm not going to cover it all, but I'm going to cover most of the major stuff. However, I'm going to be doing model railway news next week. So if there's anything in particular you'd like me to talk about that I haven't talked about today, then do let me have those in a little, well, after the stream anytime, really. But let's talk about then some of the new releases. First of all, we have this. Now, this is a BR Intercity Mark 1 in 1981 condition and if you're interested in picking one of these up I know a lot of people have been uh, coveting these haven't they for the last few years if you want to pick one of them up it's R9748 and they're going to be for sale for £34.99 which I think is about the going rate for a BR Mark 1 from Hornby anyway so pretty good actually to say it's a new tooling then we have this, which is also a BR Mark 1. I. I think Hornby are going on a bit of a BR Mark 1 spree, aren't they, at the moment? Uh, it's a restaurant buffet car. Once again, a new tool, and once again, £34.99. You can't really say fairer than that, can you, for, for a brand new coach? And this one is our 4971. There we go. That's the... Um, Yep, that's the product number if you really want to look it up. I think a little note there should be that there are a few different versions, I think, of this. It did pop up lots of times, although the items were jumping around a bit on Hornby's website. Uh, it was messing around earlier. <laughs> it wasn't going very well. So, yeah, maybe I've got the wrong end of the stick there, but I think there are a couple to choose from. And then the next thing is this, Coronation Scott Coaches, newly announced. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking that it's going to be these. Hello, what's the matter? Come on, focus. Focus. There we go. It is not these run-of-the-mill Coronation coaches. These were produced, I think, to coincide with the release of the previous Coronation class. Or even were they? Maybe they're just existing coaches that have been painted up to look like Coronation coaches. Either way, they're very inexpensive and they've been, well, difficult to get, haven't they? Until Hornby re-released some of them last year. But finally, we are going to be treated, I suppose, to a brand new tooled set of these coaches. So there we are. That's kind of not very helpful because it's just a photo of the thing in real life. But these are going to be newly tooled, which is very cool stuff. Now, the previous coach that I've just showed you a second ago, you could buy them in a pack of three for about £15, which makes, sorry, £50, not £15. That would be a fiver each. That would be ridiculous. Uh, how much was it? Um, so you could... Yeah, £18.80 each, basically, was the previous price for those. Obviously, bear in mind, though, they're very dated, they're very basic, and they're probably not all that accurate. These new ones that Humby are bringing out, and that is that Great Western set again. Don't know why that keeps popping up. These are going to cost £47.99 each, which is obviously quite steep, especially when you consider, when well, when you're used to really paying just £18.99 each for them. 
So effectively, what you used to get three of for 50 odd quid, you will now only get one of. However, obviously there's a bit of a compromise there because you're finally gonna be getting accurate Coronation Scott coaches. So I think a lot of people have been asking for that. Obviously it makes sense because Humby have just brought out a whole load of Coronation class locos. So at long last, you're now going to, uh, stop pressing that button, Sam. At long last, you're now going to be able to get up-to-date modern coaches to go with your up-to-date super-duper modern locos. And there's quite a lot of different versions of these. You've got R962, sorry, R4962, R4963, R4964, etc, etc. There's quite a, a different range of them. So if you are interested in those, be sure to head over to Hornby's website or the affiliate link in the description, uh, whichever you prefer, and check those out. Okay, finally then, there is going to be returning to the range. I thought we've talked all about BR Mark 1s already, so we might as well talk about some more. Returning to the range are going to be the sort of regular run-of-the-mill Hornby BR Mark 1s, but they are in this lovely BR green livery, which I thought would be worth mentioning in lieu of the beautiful sort of, I don't know, southern locos we have around, I guess. Um, not sure whether it would be suitable to run some ex southern locos with these. Presumably it would be. But they do look good, don't they? So, uh, And they're the same price, by the way. They're even the same price as the newly tooled versions, £34.99. There's at least two of these on offer, different versions, but this one you can see is R4975. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. So if you like BR Mark 1s, I assume you're rather pleased at this point. Okay, so they are coaches. Let's talk a little bit about wagons then. Now, I didn't see any new tooled wagons. Maybe I've missed them. Maybe they're not there. I'm not too sure. But there are a few interesting ones to mention. So there is this. Look at this. This is the Hornby Centenary Wagon 2020. It appears to have various different brandings on it. I can see the Centenary logo on there. We've got Hornby Dublo, the old Hornby Railways logo in the bottom right. A Hornby Trains logo. <laughs> In the top right, I've never seen that one before. Um, yeah, maybe that's long before my time. What it's got on the other side, I don't know. Maybe it's going to have some trying on it. I'm not sure. Maybe it'll have the Rovex logos on it. Either way, it's pretty good looking, isn't it? Uh, it's quite expensive. How much was it? It was £14.99, which is obviously quite a lot for one of those old box vans. Yeah, hang on. Let me just unprofessionally lean over and pull one out of a drawer and see if I can find one. Oh. Don't laugh at me. It's not It's not professional. I'm allowed to be unprofessional. I think it's one of these, which cost me about £4 each, I think, or something like that. Something It probably wasn't that cheap. Uh, but you obviously are paying quite a lot for the novelty of having a centenary, a centenary celebration one. So, you know, it's up to you. They are relatively expensive, but also relatively... Ah, stop it, Sam. Relatively unusual and quite special, aren't they? So, yeah, it's probably worth mentioning that. Also coming back into the range, and I say coming back into the range, but I can't really remember seeing these from Hornby before, are these, the Great Western Siphon H wagons. Now, this is quite unusual because, I mean, I've got some that are very like this. In fact, if I show you this, this is a Lima one. And obviously Hornby have acquired loads of the old Lima stuff. Uh, and for all I know, they could well have produced these under the Hornby name before, and I've just not realised it. Uh, but this one does say Siphon G on the side, whether or not that makes a difference, whether or, not, whether or not that makes this a completely different model altogether. I'm not 100% sure. But one thing that is true is that these are not sold that expensively. The, the level of detail is okay. I mean, don't expect Hornby Railways detail. I'm assuming this is going to end up in the Hornby Railways range, knowing Hornby. But they're not that expensive. In fact, the RRP is less than 20 quid. Um, 19.99. I mean, when we get these to the retailers, they're going to be really, really cheap. And in fact, I bought these secondhand. These are Lima ones with, if I show you, big chunky wheels, big old-fashioned chunky couplings. Presumably, these new Hornby ones are going to be better. And the big clincher is, I paid almost 20 quid each for these. I think I, I paid at least, I think, 15 for one or two of them. Probably not this one, but I definitely remember paying 15 quid for one in good condition. Um, probably poorer condition you can get them for a tenner or whatever <coughs> but certainly not too bad is it for 20 quid and from the retailers we're talking considerably less probably than 20 quid so siphons if you like the great western i think they carried milk didn't they if i remember that correctly um yeah quite unusual quite nice to see that back but again it's not a retool something that is new not only not newly tooled but certainly new to the range is these and there's two different versions of this set uh, they are the hornby retro wagon train packs uh, so they've got some classic brands on them, as you can see. We've got Crawford's Biscuits on this, Coleman's Mustard, etc. 
Now, three wagons here. I think these are old wagons. The one Coleman's Mustard one and the Crawford's Biscuits one are the, the same as, uh, I think, they look the same as this one, don't they? But the set is relatively expensive. I mean, mind-blowingly so. It's £44 something. Hang on. £44.99 for those three wagons. Woo, that seems a little steep. Are Coleman's Mustard not making mustard anymore? Are they just making, are they just getting by on licensing fees or something? But either way, yeah, I mean, it's nice to see it. I just wish I could afford to spend that much money on three relatively basic wagons. It could well be that they're not basic wagons at all. Maybe they're being retooled. Maybe they're not what I think they are. But yeah, mm, not, not convinced by those. And I think there's another set as well. I can't remember what the brands were, but there's a very similar set. Uh, I think the same price just with different brands on it. And if you want to look that up, that is R6990. And I'm not sure what people will think about that. I suppose one thing in its defense, it is nice to see some new brands on the sides of these wagons that would be worth getting, wouldn't they, just for that. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's get on to something a bit more reasonably priced then, in my opinion. I'm sorry to make it always about price, but that is very important. It is this, the HAA wagon. Now, this is quite interesting because it's obviously got the graffiti on it, um, which, clearly will be a bit more of a complex thing to achieve it in terms of manufacturer manufacturer manufacturing so this is r6981 it's going to cost 22 pounds 99 which i don't think is terribly bad is it given all the uh, sort of complexity of the graffiti and the fact that it's a relatively modern wagon i certainly don't own anything like that because i'm cheap and i buy cheap nasty wagons with crust on them that i have to clean off and that's the only way I get them cheap. But yeah, that one doesn't seem too bad. And once again, bear, bear in mind that these are the RRPs that I'm quoting today. Uh, and as soon as we get hold of the sort of retailer price, which is at least normally 10% off, uh, then I will talk to you about those probably in a news video at some point. But yeah, straight from Hornby, those prices don't seem too unreasonable, at least not generally speaking. Okay, let's talk about the next thing then. There are some new variations of the 20 ton brake van. Uh, I think this is the this can't be a modern 20 ton brake van because the RRP is £18.99. It might be though. But as you can see, yeah, there's there's this livery. Uh, what is this livery? No idea whatsoever. Uh, probably it'd be our livery of some description, but there's at least two. I think there's at least two new versions coming out. As I say, £18.99, so we're talking, let's guess, about 15 quid. Oh, thank you, whoever that was. Not too bad, is it, for a brake van? And uh, yeah, a couple of the liveries that Hornby have showed today, I have not seen before, so that's pretty good. One thing that uh, I did sort of spy and I like the look of was the three plank wagons, the LSWR ones. They don't look too bad. They're about reasonably, I oh, well, at the very least, they're competitively priced for brand new models, I guess, or not brand new, but you know what I mean. I mean, not secondhand. Uh, I think this one is 12 99 so it's not too bad. And again, it just it's going to go lovely, uh, a few of these. It'd break the bank, but you know, 10 of those or so uh, behind, I don't know, the LSWR T9, I guess would be beautiful, wouldn't it? So I thought that would be worth talking about. Also, something else I don't remember seeing before is the horse box. Now, is that the same model as the LMS horse box I reviewed? One thing is for sure, though, it's in a Great Western livery, which looks pretty good. Um, I, as I say, can't remember seeing one of these in Great, in Great Western guys before. That's not to say Hornby have never done such a thing. It's just to say that I can't remember ever seeing it. So it's quite cool that, uh, and that wasn't too expensive either. I think it was, well, £23.99, so that's actually quite a lot, isn't it, given I paid 10 quid for my LMS version. But it's R6972 if you're interested in that. And I think... That is it for the rolling stock I wanted to talk about. So let me know what you thought to that, folks. Oh, thank you very much to whoever just popped up. I have just missed you. But let me know what your thoughts are. What are you most excited about? Is there anything I didn't mention that you'd rather I did? Uh, do let me know in the chat. Uh, let's stop horsing around now, says Mark. Yes, I agree entirely, Mark. Uh, oh, yes, you are right, though, Luke. Yes, the T9 is specifically designed for passenger haulage. Very true, sharp shop something something else beginning with s um but yes that's very true yeah well the terrier then whatever you know what i mean there's plenty of uh, lswr locos you could run them with uh yep yeah, the horse oh quite a few people like the horse box that might just because that was the last thing i mentioned but yeah a lot of people like those uh, more engines, less horses, says Tristan Clack. Yes, I agree, Tristan. That's a very good point. Luke's locomotive. Yeah, I do love the T9, especially in that LSWR livery. That is going to be incredible. A and L model shout out, please. Yes, there you go. Uh, oh, William Town's got a great Western horse box. Ah, there you go then. So Hornby have produced those before. They look good though. Rest in poverty. My future bank account, says Dab on Clickbait. Yeah, you and me both, bro, for sure. 
uh, yeah, loving the increase in LSWR stocks, says Adam Kelly. Yeah, I agree. It's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, well, we need it. You know, there's so many pre-grouping, not just LSWR, but just pre-grouping in general. All these pre-grouping locos come out, industrial locos from the 1800s. We're going to need some rolling stock for them. It stands to reason. So it's a good job that we're seeing some of that. Uh, I'm glad Hornby are updating their range, says Nuclear Mott. Yes, so am I. This is uh, always a highlight of the year, isn't it? Uh, Backman releases next week, says Williamtown. No, I think Backman aren't until February. And fingers crossed they'll actually have something to show this year because they didn't last year and we were all a bit like, oh, right. So how do we fill an hour with this? But I'm sure they're just, I'm sure they were just holding themselves out ready for this year. I'm sure that's exactly right. Uh, okay, that's cool. Right, so uh -huh, we're, we're, we're up to the highlight of the show now, folks. Accessories. Now, some of the accessories you are not going to believe. In fact, the first one, are you ready? I think we're going to need a drum roll for the first one. Let's, let's give it a Here we go, folks. Let's give it a look. It's a badge. It's a badge, folks. It's a badge. Now, <laughs> yeah, it's not just a badge, folks, though, not just a badge. It's a gold-plated 100-year anniversary badge. Can you believe it? And that's not all, folks. No, 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 no. That's not all. Because also, there's a pen. There's a pen. Look, it's a pen. So if you really want to spend £10 on a pen, you can. You can. You absolutely can. Right. <laughs> Turn this off. <laughs> How? There we go. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, there's some interesting centenary merchandise from Hornby there. Uh, with 2020 on the side there, I think there was mugs, uh, there was all sorts of cool stuff that if you really, really want to buy, you can do. Uh, so I don't really have an awful lot to say about that. Except, oh, good eye. No, uh, only because though I can't edit this and I, if I burst everybody's eardrums, you won't be able to hear me for the rest of the video. But in, in normal circumstances, that would have definitely been a cheap plastic trombone, definitely. Right, let's move on, let's move on. Hang on, why isn't this working? Ah, yes it is. Next up, Pat Hammond has done a book. Now, this is called the Hornby Book of Trains. Uh, it's a proper book as far as I can tell, £24.99. Pat Hammond is the chap that has written and <laughs> right back to the Rovex train set that we talked about earlier. I've got them actually. There's three volumes, I think, or is there four? Not too sure. But they're very interesting. Either way, he's done a book. I think it's just a single book. I don't know whether it's a compilation of his previous efforts. Probably not. It looks like a, an all new creation, doesn't it? But yeah, that's going to be available for £24.99. It's probably well worth a read, particularly if you've been interested in what I've been talking about today with regards to the old models. Uh, some of the old classics, yeah. As you can see, a lot of those are in there. We've got the, uh, the princess, for obvious reasons, in the top there. Uh, we've got that really old Hornby sort of not it's not even Hornby Dublo is it because it's not Dublo uh, but yet that original Hornby what was it 1920 or something like that 1930 something like that very very old and then of course that looks like a, an A4 doesn't it in the bottom I'm a long way from the screen but uh, yeah so we're talking pr presumably what does it say the book of the Hornby book of trains the first 100 years so yeah presumably <laughs> over the last hundred years, which is pretty cool. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about, but something I can't actually find any information about on Hornby's website at the moment, is the HM6000 analog controller, which is app-based. So you'd install it presumably on your phone or on your iPad or something like that. It's not for DCC operation, it is a pure analog system, um, but it can control up to eight circuits. It's got built-in sounds apparently, so you can push buttons and I don't know whether your phone will make the noise or the controller or pro probably not the engine but uh, yeah somehow there are sounds there's inertia control as well which means that you can sort of speed up and slow down your locos gently basically it will simulate inertia of locomotives if you if you understand that sort of thing there's not much information on it at the moment r7292 i think is going to be the product code for that obviously the major concern is software um hornby's track record with software he says, turning his head very slightly to look at the Railmaster system, which I've got set up over there. And as any of my friends will tell you, um, trying to use that online via an app is not a lot of fun. It's a bit of a boogie mess. So hopefully Hornby will be doing the software sort of 
not themselves. Hopefully they'll outsource it to a different software company and hopefully it will work really, really well. Um, as I say, I couldn't find that on their website, so whether or not it's just late to the show or whether it's coming, I don't know, at another date, I'm not sure. But uh, I've not been able to find out anymore for the time being. So that, I believe, is that. Uh, what did you all think? Is it better than last year's range? I think from a personal level, yes, because of Rocket and other things like that. Are there as many new locos announced? It doesn't feel like it. I haven't compared the numbers or anything, but it doesn't feel like it. However, there's still been an awful lot to talk about. The drums keep going off. <laughs> Do they really? <laughs> So I've, I've been having drum rolls for everything I've been saying, is that right? There we go. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I do love that sort of thing. Right, uh, maybe they should have, maybe they should hire a proper software developer, Waves Hand. Yes, hopefully that's what they will have done. Although no doubt they would have had a proper software developer for the Railmaster system. Um, but regardless, it doesn't work very well. In fact, on mine, when you press the emergency stop button, when you press all stop, 50% of the time, nothing happens whatsoever. So the accident happens regardless, or the cat dies regardless. <sighs> I don't know. Hopefully it will be better though. I mean, Railmaster was a few years ago now, and uh, you don't hear it mentioned very often anymore, do you? That's for sure. Toast, says Nicholas Messina. Well, toast would be good. Not right now, but maybe at some point. Uh, yes, it's great, says Clive. That's good to, good, good to hear, Clive. Glad you thought it was good. Uh, Kieran Averill, so shout out, please. There you go. There you go. Shout out to you. Uh, get a free Hornby cattle dog with February Hornby maggot Tesco and WH Smith. Is that so? I was not aware of that. Wardle Road, thank you very much. Oh, did I miss all your super chats? Sorry about that. Well, appreciate them nonetheless, and I will talk about them in a, a future video. But thank you very, very much. I've not been keeping an eye on the chat, obviously. The controller, Jordan, is for DC. It is for analog only. If you want DCC controllers, Hornby have available different versions, different controllers you can use instead. Um, not really. I preferred last year's range, Lego Wheels 2. That's fair enough. Uh, I mean, if you're not really interested in Hornby's history, I guess it might have been a bit of a, a bore for you. Although, even so, you can't deny that Stevenson's Rocket is a lot of fun. Cool. Could you read this, please, says IDK13. Yes, I can, and I did too. Right, well, I think that is about it. I've got to go and film some reviews now because I'm getting a bit behind. But uh, thank you all very, very much for coming. Thank you all very much for getting involved. I hope you enjoyed hearing about Hornby's range. If you're not watching this live, do let me know down in the comments what you enjoyed the most, what you're going to pre-order, and probably, let's go for what you're not looking forward to. What's the worst thing in the range, just to keep things balanced? Well, I think that's just about it. I don't think there was anything else to say other than Happy New Year. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you very, very soon. Right, folks, I will, well, let's talk about this. Uh, next week, Monday, is going to be Model Railway News, but I'm going to host it live from right here, so that will be interesting. Then next week, videos will start again as normal on Wednesday. And I'm sure no one can guess what I'm going to be starting with, but it might have something to do with this model in my hand right now. I wouldn't like to give that away, even though I very clearly just did. Well, folks, have a great week. I will see you very soon, and I hope you enjoyed the stream, of course. All right, take care, folks, and see you soon.